We are spending a week living with the 2022 Nissan LEAF, which is now the cheapest pure electric vehicle that you can buy. This is obviously the refresh one that came out a couple years ago. Better than the first gen, because the first gen was, it looked weird. It looked like a catfish to me. This looks much more conventional. Uh, we'll be spending a week driving it. We have a couple things planned with the new Nissan LEAF. We'll talk about the range, some of the interior things, the exterior, just what it's like to have and live with. Much more conventional styling. We still do have the old Nissan badge here, the logo. It has not been updated on this vehicle. And behind it, there's this really dark panel that's got this kind of hint of blue triangular texture behind it too. Above it, we have where the charging ports are. I'll show that later when I go plug it in. It just looks, it looks good. I mean, it's much more normal. Uh, the double V motion grill, that's kind of the Nissan signature styling. We have this subtle blue front splitter accent too. I guess blue has been decided a universal color for electric vehicles. Uh, some people are using that. It just looks a lot more conventional. It's like a hatchback. This red color is pretty nice. I believe these are 17 inch wheels. Decent sidewall on the tires too. And around back, it just more just regular styling. Leaf, Nissan, zero emission. And it's the SL Plus trim, which means more power and more range. Another blue accent on that diffuser back there. I think it looks a lot better than the first generation one, for sure. Getting into the Leaf, it has a flat bottom steering wheel. That means it's sporty, right? No, actually, no, this is very not sporty at all. We have just under a thousand miles on this vehicle, so we'll hit a thousand on the drive to work today. Turn it on. Have a little startup animation with the zero emission statement. Infotainment in the middle. The buttons for the climate control area remind me of like a bow tie shape. Interesting. Uh, it is single zone climate control. We have heated seats up front. We've got USB ports, and then the power button, the on button, is right there. A little slot for storage. Uh, this is the weirdest thing in the world. I literally got it and I was like, what is that posted on Instagram? Got a lot of funny responses. Uh, this is the, I was gonna say transmission or gear selector, but it's an EV, so it doesn't have, it's park reverse drive, park neutral drive, it just, it's weird. So it reminds me of like, remember those like computer mice, like computer mouse, like that had the weird ergonomic shape, whatever. So park is the button up here and then reverses left it up. Now we're in reverse, the camera pulls up. And oh, I went back to neutral. That's neutral. Back to reverse. And then left and then down is drive. So now we are in drive. It's, I mean, another blue accent there. It's just weird. Luckily, there's a little diagram there because when I first got it, I was like, eh, eh, eh. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. Currently showing 207 miles of range at 93% charge. When I left work yesterday at 100% charge, it did display 226 miles of range, which I think is a little optimistic. Um, there is a model that can do 226 with the extended, but I think the SL Plus is 215. I'll look up those numbers later. On the left side, we do have heated steering wheel, and then that steering wheel button there is for the lane keep assist. And then look at that, that's the controlling the front uh, charging panel. And it's still like a gas pump symbol, just with like a plug, electric plug on the side, which I think is kind of weird, because it's like, this thing doesn't need gas, but they still use the gas symbol. Just little details that are interesting. This is all just shiny black plastic here. Uh, with that, let's let's hit the road. We'll keep talking more about it. the heated steering wheel is going. That's nice. I started driving, and now it's showing 216 miles of range, so it just very quickly recalculated. You also notice the E-pedal off, which means when I let off the, not the gas pedal, the go pedal accelerator, the car will just coast. That's me letting off. But if I go here and turn on E-pedal, and as soon as I let off on the gas, or I keep saying gas, as soon as I let off on the go pedal, it very aggressively regen brakes and just starts decelerating. So it is one pedal driving. That's just, I'm not touching the brakes. That's just uh, E-pedal, one pedal driving. I am not used to it. It takes a little bit to get used to it. And since I don't drive EVs all that often with one pedal driving, I've been using just regular uh, conventional where it'll actually just coast itself for quite a while. <laughs> it's wet out, woo! <laughs> it's got a lot of torque, it's instant torque as EV. And it's, especially when it's wet out right now, front wheel drive, it's, it's not difficult to get the traction light to flash, especially when you're turning, but it gets up and goes. I mean, even from 45, I just floor it. It's pretty quick. 
or quick enough. I don't say pretty quick, it's quick enough. All right, to plug in, we'll press that button right there and it'll pop that front panel at the front of the leaf. We'll open this up and you'll see this is the charging port we'll be using. There's two of them. That one looks a lot more serious. Higher voltage. Grab our charging cable. <clears throat> okay. And plugged in. And you'll hear it locks. So you can't just go in and unplug it while it's charging. But if I grab the key, if I can find it in my pocket, the key has your normal lock unlock, but also if you hold this, it'll unlock the charge. You'll hear that. It'll unlock the charging cable. If I plug it back in, here it locks. And then we have little lights here on the dash. Three blue lights that illuminate indicating charging status. All right. It is a very warm, but also very windy night in December. The leaf is fully charged. So when it is fully charged, it looks like you can just unplug it whenever you want. I didn't have to do anything. The car is still locked. Uh, so we'll coil this back up and time to head home. We'll go ahead and close this cover while the light turns off and then shut that. This red metallic paint does look really nice under the uh, parking lot lights. You'll see this thing is a conventional little hatchback. Like it doesn't look weird. And uh, minus the little blue touches and stuff, nothing makes it super obvious that it's an electric vehicle. Whereas some electric vehicles, including the previous generation of the Leaf, just looked really, really weird. Got this kind of boomerang shaped taillight. Whoa, it's windy. All right, I am going to get inside and drive home. We've got this little front A-pillar windows too. Visibility is fantastic. Like, just massive windshield. Press the power button. Turn off the music <laughs> because copyright issues. Little seven inch screen on the left side, 100% range. Uh, so let's see, 100% battery charge. Let's see what the range is at. Why are the little seatbelt lights still on? Go away. No, 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 that's not what I meant to do. I'm just pressing buttons on the steering wheel right now. Do you hear that noise? That's the backup sound. Spooky. And then this weird contraption. Uh, nope, that was reverse again. That was weird using my left hand. What? That is substantially above any rating, and I am fairly confident that is way too optimistic and would drop a lot with rear wheel driving. 247 miles is beyond the rating without a single doubt. So, High wind warning in about 24.0 miles from current location. But, wait, that was a weird warning. Which direction? Is it 24 miles that way or 24 miles that way or it's just a big circle? Uh, that's a weird warning. That's, I think, built into the Nissan system. But uh, yeah, that 247 miles of range, I don't think is accurate, but we'll see what it drops with my 10-ish mile drive home, I think. That number seems a little more reasonable, 218 miles on a full charge. It's a nice afternoon, sun is starting to set already, we are heading off. I actually, what I wanna do now is demonstrate the e-pedal, what it can do. So I have it off right now and the car will kinda coast on its own. If you hit e-pedal, it's one pedal driving. You have to have your foot on a brake to uh, turn it off because if you don't, the car starts coasting away, so like it crawls. So right now with no e-pedal, if I take my foot off the brake, it will creep forward. If I turn e-pedal on and I took my foot off the brake, like it does not move. We are just stationary right here. There's no creep at all. So when you turn it off, it's got all this information on charge times and so forth. So that's really interesting, just EV things, right? Still getting used to this little knob thingamajig. Parked next to my coworker's gorgeous Porsche Targa. Hey, it's matching reds. This is the uh, very much the past, but so awesome. But this is the future. And ironically, I'm pretty sure that makes more power than the Porsche, but obviously I think everybody would rather have the Porsche. The trunk on the Leaf is fairly spacious, but that rear windshield, you can see through it. So we do have this cargo cover here. 
enough for I've got a couple of packages to drop off at FedEx, a backpack in there. It's a pretty low floor here too. So if you look at, here is the actual like lip and then all the way it drops down here. No spare tire or anything inside. I believe this is charging stuff in a little bag. There's something for the Bose sound system down in there, but uh, yeah, pretty practical little hatchback back here. 192 miles of range. Uh, it's not that far of a drive, but we'll have a little bit downtown, so it should be good. We should be totally fine. We'll make it home and then we'll charge it once we're back. I was just given an iPhone cable to plug in to my iPhone. Launch up CarPlay, because this does have CarPlay. Theoretically, there we go. Of course, to be expected, as you approach downtown Chicago, we got stuck in some traffic. This little rings of blue here on this button enables it. So we have adaptive cruise control going and also lane keep. You can change the distance, obviously, with adaptive cruise and also uh, the lane centering. It holds it in there pretty well. The button is on the left side there next to the heated steering wheel button. So it's doing it quite well, actually. I will keep a hand on here. We haven't come to a complete stop yet. When you come to a complete stop, typically you need driver intervention again to restart. So we might get that here, but no, we're still crawling. What's B? What is B mode? No, I want drive. I have no idea what B is. It might be for battery regen or something. So yeah, Leaf is doing quite a good job. So have CarPlay running there. So the drive downtown has left us with 66% on the battery, which shows 144 miles of range, which is enough to get us around Chicago when we do take it out tomorrow and also home. So I'm in this giant structure and I, there's supposed to be charging stations somewhere. I can't find them. And I think I would run out of electricity before I found the charging station because it's like three levels down and massive. Uh, so we're just gonna park it here and we'll leave it and we'll pick this back up after a uh, quick little getaway to Chicago. So Leaf, you'll stay in the parking lot for a little bit um, and then we'll pick it back up and hopefully not run out of electricity on the way home because that would be inconvenient. Finishing up this weekend trip with 32% charge left, which is 70 miles of range. I did find this really cool other screen that shows a lot of information too. So this is approximate charge time to get it to 50%, 75%, and 100%. So we'll be plugging it in tomorrow and seeing if we can get a full charge during a day of work. A couple other screens too, battery temperature and capacity. But the, uh, the important ones are up here. 70 miles of range left and yeah. It, it worked, <laughs> did not plug into Leaf at all for a weekend trip, and it does have enough range for that. Longer trips would probably get a little annoying with the 200-ish mile range though. So the Nissan Leaf is a very good form of transportation, but that's not the most high price you've ever heard probably about a car. It to me feels like it was caught in between the complete overhaul of the Nissan lineup. It's not anywhere as outdated and old as like the old stuff. Even three, four years ago, Nissan vehicles were really, really aging. But the new stuff has been fantastic. Like the new Pathfinder, I was really, really impressed with that. The new infotainment, the interior, the way it drives, the styling. But this isn't at that new level. Like we don't have the new Nissan logo. It just hasn't gotten that. So like the interior's all right. The infotainment's not that great. Apple CarPlay, I've had to unplug, plug in, unplug back and forth a bunch of times to get it to load um, and I tried different cables so it wasn't the cable and so it's just it's all right um, it just it's not quite as exciting as something like the Mach-E or even uh, I drove a Volkswagen ID4 for a little bit the interior is definitely not as nice but it is the cheapest new electric vehicle you can buy so there is a value argument there it's all right it's, it's a good form of transportation range is decent again I was going to do the whole downtown weekend trip to Chicago it's showing 49 miles of range at 23 percent battery so I will plug it in and charge it up have one more day left with it it's got some cool little touches I mean the heated steering wheel the uh, assist systems with the Nissan drive-wise, uh, not Nissan drive-wise, with the Nissan uh, Safety Shield 360 is pretty good, um, the little blue circle there, and um, it's decently practical, spacious, plenty of headroom here, but it's small and compact, so it's very easy to parallel park, but uh, those are some of my thoughts on the Nissan Leaf, so I'm excited to try out the Aria, though, that is going to be really nice, the interior on the Aria, the concept that I saw was epic, I did really like that. This is as low as I have run the leaf, 17%, and it's showing nine and a half hours to a full charge. Uh, so I'm gonna plug it in up front. Again, just have regular charging here, nothing crazy. Let's see how much we will get over the course of the rest of the day until I leave for the evening. The third charging light is still blinking, so we are not fully charged, but hopefully we're close enough. It's almost 8 p.m. now, so we gotta go unplug the car. Oh, see, if it's not fully charged and the car is unlocked, I can't just unplug the charger. Got the key. There we go, you hear it unlock. 
We'll go ahead and turn the leaf on. We got all the way to 88%. Looks like another two and a half hours to get full. And I think batteries usually like they slow down the charging as you get closer and closer to full, but that will be uh, plenty of range, 197 miles, enough to get home and for the car to get picked up tomorrow. And that's the last time I'm charging a leaf for this week. Is it worth the money? Uh, I still never got the window sticker from Nissan, so I actually don't know what this one's sticker is exactly for, but without the tax credit, I think as an SL Plus, it's probably in the 30s. You can get a very base, cheap Nissan Leaf, but it'll have a lot less range, a lot less power, some not as many of the nice features, but if you're looking for just a really affordable, uh, simple EV to get around town, it's still a very good option. The cheapest pure electric vehicle on the market. That wraps up my week living with the Nissan Leaf. Pretty practical, pretty good, but not quite the most competitive thing out there. But I think Nissan will solve it with the Aria because I'm really excited about that. I saw it at this like preview studio event last year, earlier this year. And I was like, wow, I want to see this car once it's done. Um, otherwise, there's the Leaf. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog living with a 2021 Nissan Leaf. Forget the motto year too. Man, my brain's tired. Whole day of work and meetings in the gym. Exhausted.